I'm sure it had something to do with trying to get his podcast some some stuff and get it rolling. I'm going to be y'all worst enemy that day. I'm going to be y'all worst enemy hey, that day. It's tough, man, but somebody comes to you with a lot of money, it, it, it changes. This is one of my favorite topics to discuss on this channel, and we do have an update on it. It seems like the saga is continuing, and there's a lot to catch you guys up on. So before we get to the content, when Aaron Rodgers finally gets traded to the New York Jets, we're going to be giving away multiple followers on my Twitter account, $120 each. And now that we get all that out of the way, work. Some of the green slips you guys have been sending me is crazy. Like $1,250 off of a $250 slip or $1,500 off of a $150 power play. We've been making bank off of our basketball picks, bro. March Madness was a huge success. And believe me, we're about to ramp it up for the NBA playoffs. All you have to do is download prize picks, use my promo code microphone, and they'll match your first deposit up to $100 instantly after that just follow me on instagram i post all of my picks onto my instagram story for free and we can start making money off of these picks together my check one two one two what's going on everybody last year we saw one of the craziest off seasons in nfl history quite possibly i mean from tom brady retiring and coming back to russell wilson getting traded to the denver broncos to khalil mack getting traded to the chargers to Devonte adams and tyree kill getting traded to brand new teams which, by the way, the result of the Devontae Adams trade kind of ruined everything for the Kansas City Chiefs and Tyreek Hill. Originally, Tyreek Hill was supposed to return to the Kansas City Chiefs. I'm sure you guys remember that. That didn't end up happening because Tyreek Hill saw what the wide receiver market was looking like, and he decided to demand a trade to a team that could pay him Devontae Adams money. Devontae Adams got a five-year, $140 million contract with over $60 million guaranteed. Tyreek Hill would get traded by the Kansas City Chiefs to the Miami Dolphins dolphins for five draft picks one being a first round pick in 2022 another being a second round pick in 2022 and a fourth round pick in 2022 they also got a fourth round pick and a sixth round pick in this upcoming draft so the miami dolphins clearly did this to get tua some additional help so they could truly see if tua is going to be their guy under center moving forward and the kansas city chiefs didn't really have a choice but to do this because they couldn't afford to pay tyree kill because patrick Mahomes' cap hit was becoming a little intimidating ultimately the trade worked for both sides Tua took a huge step forward with Mike McDaniel, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, the, the great additions that the Dolphins made in the offseason. He was able to throw for over 3,500 passing yards, 25 touchdowns, and 8 interceptions. He played one more game this year than last year, and he threw for 1,000 more yards. So clearly, when Tua's healthy, he's a more than capable quarterback to potentially bring you to a Super Bowl. The question is, is he going to be healthy? Well, the Dolphins actually addressed this over the past offseason after going after Mike White. So hopefully... Hopefully some Mike White magic in the event that Tua goes down is all they need to be successful. But you might be wondering why I'm making a video on this. Well, last offseason, if you remember, Tyree Kill, the moment he got traded, did a bit of a media tour. And it's quite the tour if you think about it. This starts with him giving us the real reason why he joined the Miami Dolphins to begin with. Which, by the way, I don't hold anything against him for doing this. Look at it for yourself. It's tough, man. But somebody comes to you with a lot of money. It, it, it changes. So I don't think you gotta be a genius to know that Tyreek Hill originally wanted to get traded to the Dolphins so he could get paid more money. Plus, Miami's a pretty dope place to live in, so I don't necessarily blame Tyreek Hill for wanting to get traded to the Miami Dolphins if they could pay him more, if he could still contend, and if he could live in freaking Miami. And this wouldn't be the first time he said this. He would also say this again that offseason. Like, I don't want to break up, you know, something special. You know, obviously, I want to be the highest paid. You know, obviously, I got goals of my own, but Chiefs, they were nowhere close to, you know, being close to the Devontae Adams deal. Eventually, this transitioned into Tyreek Hill defending Tua by saying he has pretty balls. Nothing, it's nothing weird. You know, at first I thought it was going to be something crazy, the ball going all over the place, but Tua actually has, you know, probably one of the prettiest balls I've ever caught in my life. So, um, it's, it's very catchable. I don't want to continue because the more I talk, the more it sounds weird. So, it, Tua is a... 
He's a very accurate quarterback. That's all I'm saying. And then he said Tua is the equivalent of 10 Matt Moores. Before you would give us the biggest masterpiece of the offseason, a line that truly did what Tyreek Hill was hoping to do, generate attention. Hopefully for his podcast, I'm not necessarily sure. And that's when he said Tua is a more accurate quarterback than Patrick Mahomes. As far as accuracy wise, I'm going with Tua all day. So which one would you rather have? The deep ball where you got to scramble around the field to try to go find it? Or nah. do you want that accuracy to hit you right in the bread basket on the run? I want it to hit me right in the bread basket just like I did in the Buffalo Bills game and take it 70. And the rest is history. And again, this is not a shot at anybody. Right. It's just stuff that had to be said. It right? needed to be said. It needed so to be said. said. Now, I have nothing against Tua, but I definitely think it's a very weird type of move to demand a trade from your team and then get traded from your team to the Dolphins and then start saying that your ex-quarterback is a lesser quarterback than your current quarterback. But we all know what he was trying to do here. Tua really needed as much confidence as he possibly could. There was a lot of questions surrounding Tua last offseason before he showed the type of player he is this past season. It was awesome. So I can understand why he did that. I don't necessarily think it was worth getting the death threats, but unfortunately, that's the type of world we're living in. A world where you're seeing Chief Saholic robbing banks and then reach out to the Kelsey brothers to try to get on their podcast. There's also some Chiefs fans that might take disrespecting Patrick Mahomes a little bit too seriously. But throughout the season, Tyreek Hill's podcast would end because he wanted to focus on football, but that doesn't mean he wouldn't make appearances on other podcasts, most notably Club Shay Shay. And this is where he started to lie, in my opinion. He started by saying that he didn't feel valid valued by the Kansas City Chiefs. We actually told Kansas City what Miami offered. Kansas City was like, nah, we just gonna trade them. But then I was like, okay, bet. Like that, that really goes to show how valuable I am to them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Opposing to how valuable I, I could be to Miami. So Correct. I was like, just sign the deal, let's get it done. And there's so many lies in this particular podcast. I mean, he claims that he asked the Chiefs for AJ Brown's contract when AJ Brown's contract extension came more than a month after Tyreek Hill got traded to the Miami Dolphins. Maybe he's saying, I just wanted an AJ Brown type contract. I'm not necessarily sure, but it seems like Tyreek was consistently trying to rationalize leaving a winning team in the Kansas City Chiefs that seemed to be perennial Super Bowl contenders. I mean, every single year Patrick Mahomes has been under center. The Chiefs have made it to, at the bare minimum, the AFC Championship game. Now, maybe he felt guilt about that. Maybe he feels guilty for taking the money as opposed to trying to consistently contend with the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't know. But it got much more interesting recently. If saying that he didn't feel valued by the Kansas City Chiefs, which by the way, I want to make sure we're 100% clear on this. Tyree Kill came out of the NFL draft with a lot of question marks about his character. I don't want to dive into that because this video will definitely get demonetized if we do. Andy Reid saw a tremendous amount of potential in him and really helped him become the player he is today. I don't think it's a stretch to say at all whatsoever that Tyreek Hill would not be making hundreds of millions of dollars to play for the Miami Dolphins, let alone have a Super Bowl ring if it wasn't for the Kansas City Chiefs. So I think at the very minimum, just showing some class and having some gratitude for the team that was able to put you in the situation that you're in today is in order. But again, maybe he's just trying to save face. That's definitely a possibility here. Well, recently, it's gotten a little bit more weird, I gotta admit. The very first clip is Tyree Kill telling a young fan wearing a Deshaun Watson jersey, which I... I, I <laughs> I just haven't seen that before. I haven't seen a young fan wearing a Browns Deshaun Watson jersey. It's the first time I'm going to try to leave the memes behind here. I honestly hope Deshaun Watson could get back to the player he once was because he was one of my favorite players, at least on the field, prior to everything happening. But Tyreek Hill would admit that he wanted to join the Browns at a particular point. Now, maybe things have taken a turn. It wouldn't shock me if Tyreek Hill was a little disappointed that the Kansas City Chiefs were able to win a Super Bowl quite literally the year after Tyreek Hill got traded. That definitely needs to sting. Last year, you can make an argument that Tyreek Hill was the second or third best player on the Kansas City Chiefs. So whenever you trade your second or third best player, depending on who you ask, some people might expect that the Chiefs would take a step back. The Chiefs had a decent recovery plan compensating 
estate for the hole that Tyreek Hill left behind. They signed Juju Smith-Schuster. They signed Marquez Valdez-Scantling. They drafted Sky Moore. They signed Justin Ross. They try to do a lot of things in order to make up for the void that Tyreek Hill left. Ultimately, none of it worked. There wasn't a wide receiver that filled Tyreek Hill's shoes. I predicted that maybe McCole Hardman would be that guy, but it wasn't. It was a mix of all the wide receivers and Patrick Mahomes making intelligent football decisions that resulted in the Kansas City Chiefs winning a Super Bowl. Now, I want to be abundantly clear. It's not like Tyreek Hill is going to regret this decision for the rest of his life because he, without a doubt, had his most prolific season of his career in his first year with a brand new team. Prior to this season, Tyreek Hill's best season was 2018 with the Chiefs where he had 1,479 receiving yards and 12 touchdowns. Now this past year, Tyreek Hill had over 1,700 receiving yards and seven touchdowns. I mean, the man absolutely balled out. The Dolphins made the right move. The Chiefs made the right move. It worked out for everybody. Tyreek Hill gets paid. Everyone lives happily ever after. But I guess the fact that the Chiefs won a Super Super Bowl really got to Tyreek Hill's head because Tyreek Hill already began talking trash for their impending game during the 2023 season, saying this. Chiefs Keenan, when the Miami Dolphins come to Arrowhead Stadium this year, guess what we gonna do? Guess what we gonna do? I hate to throw up the peace sign against y'all. I hate to do it. But guess what? I'm gonna be y'all worst enemy that day. I'm going to be y'all worst enemy hey, that day. We'll you better change that. the signals. I know every signal y'all got. In any other circumstance, in any normal circumstance, I would say, okay, whatever. He's hyped up to face against his old team. There's nothing wrong with that. But the thing is, it seems like Tyreek Hill has been trying to get a reaction out of the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes for so long over the past year. And at this point, after the Chiefs won a Super Bowl, it kind of is coming off as a little sad, in my opinion. Now, I understand understand some Dolphins fans are going to be a little annoyed about this and this isn't to say that Tyreek isn't an awesome player this isn't to say that the Dolphins aren't Super Bowl contenders this year they've made some great moves this past offseason but it's definitely a weird type of energy to consistently try to get a reaction out of your old team and your old quarterback and don't get me wrong Patrick Mahomes did respond to Tyreek Hill once but he was saying what we all were thinking he said this I haven't talked to him since the podcast um that came out but I mean I talked to him in Formula One in Miami in May um, and everything seemed fine so uh he's trying to show that he, he he loves where he's at in Miami. Um, he, he he loves his teammates. I'm sure it had something to do with trying to get his podcast some some stuff and get it rolling. So it just seems so beneath Tyreek Hill, who is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, if not the best wide receiver in the NFL, to consistently ask for attention from his ex-team or to consistently try to generate some sort of drama against his ex-team. It's literally like he's talking to a wall and no one's responding to him, but he's trying to consistently keep this drama going. I can understand it definitely stings that your old team was able to win a Super Bowl literally the year after they traded you. I definitely think it would have helped if he was there. He definitely could have contributed to a Super Bowl, but I really wish Tyreek Hill would make peace with his decision because in my opinion, I think he made the right decision. I think going after one last large contract in a lovely state to live in, nothing against Kansas City. It's just Miami's weather over Kansas City is, it's difficult to compare the two. He essentially chose taking money and living in a warmer weather state with no state income tax to play out his next big contract as opposed to staying in Kansas City, which he already knows what to expect on a significantly lower contract. And I don't think he should be ashamed of that. He's trying to break into new media and I think that's a good move. But I feel like he's beating a dead horse consistently bringing up this drama with Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs and then creating lies about him not feeling valued with the Kansas City. City Chiefs. I mean, looking at Tyreek Hill statistics, there were only like two games where he had less than three targets. There were two games where he had four targets. And then there was only one game where he had five targets. The rest, if you just take a look, are double digits for the most part, or eight or nine targets. Now, to be honest, the first part of this video was stuff that we've covered many times in the past. And if that first part didn't do a good job getting your attention, this part most definitely will. Tyreek Hill would then discuss his future in the NFL. And he even stated that he plans to retire in two years from now. Watch. So you're going to, this is what, year eight for you? Year eight, baby. Year eight. How many more years do you think you can play? I'm or going, do you want to play? I'm going for 10, man. I'm, I'm going to finish out this contract, the Dolphins, man, and then I'm going to call it quits. You know, I want to I want to go into the business side. You, know, um, you want to be in the coaching too, right? Yeah. 
Now, whether this is believable and whether this is intelligent are two completely separate conversations to have. Do I really believe Tyreek Hill? Well, it seems like there's a history of him stretching out the truth just to try to get people's attention. And to his credit, it has worked. I mean, especially this particular part, I actually had to hold this video an additional day to make sure I include this. I felt like it was very significant. So he definitely got my attention at the very minimum. Do I truly believe in his heart of hearts? That's his plan. I think it's a little bit more complicated than that, to be honest. I mean, at that point, it really depends on how his body's feeling. What are the odds that the Miami Dolphins could still contend at that age? What's the landscape of the NFL? Maybe there's another attractive destination for him. 31 isn't necessarily a young age to retire in the NFL because, of course, the shelf life of players in the NFL vary, like, significantly. But in the case of Tyreek Hill, I could understand why he would decide to retire that early. I mean, I'm all for any player retiring from the NFL after playing for 10 years. I understand hearing him retire from the age of 31 could be a little shocking but then you think of what happened to Calvin Johnson and you all of a sudden realize that Tyreek Hill has had a significantly better career than Calvin Johnson did I'm not saying he was a significantly better player I'm not gonna get into that but if you approached me and asked me if I would rather have the career Tyreek Hill had or the career Calvin Johnson had who also retired early significantly more early than Tyreek Hill would by the way then I would 100% pick Tyreek Hill he's made significantly more money. He's played in really good situations. He didn't have as many expectations when he was drafted. He's won a Super Bowl ring. And it seems like he has the ability to go out on his own terms. To be honest, I think he'd be very successful in the business side of whatever he pursues. It seems like he's very savvy at, at the very minimum, generating attention around himself. Hopefully he doesn't go an Antonio Brown route if he decides to do that. But he gave us an idea about what his plans were. Check it out. It's your number one after football business idea or kind of goals after football so i i really want to get into like the gaming space like i really want to get huge in, in that and that's kind of what i'm doing right now i'm using my platform um creating the gaming team um which isn't lunch yet it should lunch by the end of this month so it seems like he would want to get into the gaming space which is something he's done in the past i believe he has done twitch streams in the past i really would be curious to know what his next venture is i would say it's very intelligent to get out of the nfl okay. at the age of 31 if he could do it but it is going to be very tempting to get back into the nfl when you're at the age of 31 and you have teams trying to get your services at the same time tyreek hill is very overly dependent on his speed maybe there's a significant drop off by the 2025 season I don't necessarily know, but if this is the end of Tyreek Hill's career, he definitely could hold his head up high, whether he wins another Super Bowl or has another 1,000 yard receiving season or not, because he definitely is one of the best wide receivers of this generation, and is definitely going to be considered one of the most memorable players of all time. So let me know in the comment section down below, what do you guys think about Tyreek Hill and him hyping up this impending matchup against the Kansas City Chiefs in 2023, and aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.